Back inside CrossFit Mayhem here in Cookville, Tennessee, as it's day two of the CrossFit Mayhem Classic, the first ever time we have held this sanctioned event here at CrossFit Mayhem. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Tommy Marquez. Rory McKernan is on the competition floor as we are ready for the third of seven scored events here. As this one presents a much different challenge than these athletes faced yesterday. And Tommy, we saw this last night when the good dudes were on the floor. But man, get your shoulders ready for this one. Oh man, get the shoulders ready and make sure your midline is strong. Obviously the handstand walk and that heavy dumbbell overhead is gonna put a ton of tension on the shoulders. But like they teach in CrossFit, quarter extremity, right? If your midline is soft and your midline breaks down over time, it's gonna, it's gonna put exponential pressure on those shoulders if you're unable to stabilize that heavy dumbbell as it gets later in the round, later in the round, and you're gonna see some failed reps. Yeah, event description, event number three, presented by Deviance Fuel, bottom left-hand corner of your screen. And for more on what we we're about to see, let's send it down to Roy McKernan. Yeah, that's right, Sean. We're going to deal with something that we haven't dealt with before, keeping in mind that this event was actually released earlier in the week. I was backstage, got to talk to some of the athletes who were getting their hands on the dumbbell, but not for the first time. What I'm expecting to see is a couple of athletes knock this out of the park, but absolutely, especially in this first heat, don't expect everybody to make it within the, within the time cap. This is a new movement that we have not seen before. Thank you, Roe. Eight men here in this first heat your overall leader Brendan Willis will be in lane number eight but while the event yesterday really played to his strengths this one may not yeah I mean starting off with a long run looking at Brendan Willis's uh, event history last year in Dubai I mentioned on the broadcast as well that you know he won the 8k sand run uh, that was very similar to the ruck that we saw yesterday now the big question for him is can he hold on in Dubai a similar situation he fell to 23rd overall so this is a great opportunity for him to maybe showcase that he's learn from that experience, work on some of his weaknesses, and see if he can at the very least, if not for the top spot, hold on to maybe hang around the final heat. Brendan Willis had a great battle with Drew Wayman yesterday on the first two events. As the men are getting set here to start their first event of the day, three total events here on day number two. And a couple of athletes that have been on the fringe of qualifying for the CrossFit Games here, uh, in lane number one, Mitch Spute, um, and lane number seven, Austin Spencer. Both of those athletes have finished one spot away from qualifying for the CrossFit Games at Regionals back in the day. Mitch was in the Southwest. Uh, Austin Spencer was out of the East, the Northeast region. So some, some athletes who have done well at Regionals may be looking to finally break through here. And seven of the eight men in this first heat are all still looking for an invitation to the CrossFit Games. Cam Crockett in lane number four is the only man who has qualified. He finished 17th. Uh, in the World Wide Open. Uh, here are your overall standings. After yesterday's two-part event, Brendan Willis with 190 total points, followed by Drew Wayman, Josh Miller, Kyle Bernier, and Luke Schaefer. The top five have all not qualified for the CrossFit Games yet. And then you see six, seven, and eight right behind them, Chandler Smith, Adler, and Caron, all three games experienced athletes who have their spot through the open. So it'll be nice to see if they can kind of hold off some of these top names. Scoring system is the same that we've seen as at the games in the past. 100 points for a win, 95 points for second, 90 for third, and then so on and so forth as we work our way down uh, the standings. And of course, that gap in points gets smaller the farther down the leaderboard you go. Yeah, Tola Moroquino in 30th place. But this is an event that certainly plays into his strengths. Yeah, Tola's great on his hands. Um, he's probably the strongest athlete in CrossFit as far as the Olympic lifts and the Olympic lift variants go. Um, so the big question for him, obviously he's a great power athlete. How does he handle going below parallel with the dumbbell? If he's all right with that, then he should blow this one away. Take a look at Colton Mertens. He's in the middle of the floor. Mertens is one of the men in this Heat, who does have games experience. He was at the CrossFit Games in 2018 on a team with CrossFit Kilo. Finished 108th in the World Wide Open. He's got some sanctional experience. He was at the Rogue Invitational last year. We saw him do quite well in the, the parallel handstand push-up workout. One of those athletes that really starting to try and find their legs here at the sanctional level and hopefully um, eventually break through to the games. Roy McKernan briefing the athletes on a couple of things before we get started here. A 
the athletes will retake their spots. You can see here, Sean, we talked about the intimate environment. You can see the athletes are just a few feet away from the fans sitting right behind them in the stands. We also have a small barrier between the athletes sitting around the rest of the competition floor. This is really kind of cool. It gives you that kind of old school kind of fight club feel that we used to see in some of the open announcements. That's Spencer, That's Austin Spencer out of CrossFit MF in Portland, Maine. 111th in the World Wide Open. One of the many men here in this field who is looking to earn an invite to the CrossFit Games. He'll be working out of lane number seven. I had the chance to see Austin compete last, last year at the Brazil CrossFit Championship. Had a strong finish there. I think he's an athlete who's a little bit better in live competition than he is necessarily in the open. Still waiting for things to get sorted here before we start the first heat of event number three, the third of seven scored events at the at the Mayhem Classic. There is event three, powered by Defiance Fuel. Four 100-foot handstand walks. And then dumbbell squat snatches in the middle of those. And the weight gets heavier on the dumbbell squat snatches. The reps go down. The rep scheme has changed, though. It is 18, 14, 10 on the dumbbell squat snatches. You know, why not? Let's just make it a little Let's bit make harder. make it a little tougher. As, uh, Classic rich fronting programming. Tested it a couple times. Ah, not hard enough. Let's add a few more reps. Well, the athletes aren't ready to get going here yet, but Roy McKernan is. <laughs> He's found a mechanical bull. Ro, what are All you right, doing, so, my friend? All right, Sean. So, Sean, we've got some amazing friends here. Defiance Fuel being one of them. And they brought this mechanical bull here. All right, fire it up. And uh, they're giving away six months of free water. This is easy so far. So far, so easy. That's all you got? That's all you got? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> win them all. Can't win them all. All right, everybody come try the bowl. Thank you, Ro. We appreciate weekend. you putting your body in peril for the entertainment of ourselves and others. That was uh, I'm pretty be, impressive. I'm going to be honest. For a man that was born and raised in Texas, I thought he'd uh, hold on a little bit longer at least. He's only lived here for, what, five, six months? So Yeah, but he was raised in I, Texas, That's you a know? good point. That is a very good point. He wears the belt buckle at open announcements, you know? That's true. I think there's a song about that, maybe, <laughs> Rhinestone Cowboy. We'll get him back up there later on, see if he's he can manage to improve. <laughs> Still waiting to start the, the first heat here of event number three. This is the first event of the day. So we're one minute out, we're being told. And this is the event that we saw Rich Roning, Dan Bailey, and Haley Adams take on last night. Mm -hmm. And Rich Froning with a time of 6.26, it's I'm interested to see if that's going to stick. You know, I, I I don't think it's fair necessarily for these athletes to compare it to it because Rich A programmed this this workout. B, it was the third time he's done it, and each time he'd improved. So this is more of a refined performance that we saw from Rich than we might see at some of these uh, events. But still, you know, a good time to shoot for in the very least. Heat number one of event three, powered by Defiance Fuel, is underway. We start with that first 100-foot handstand walk. Down and back, it has to be unbroken on both lengths of the floor. If they come down, they have to go back to the start. That was Hunter Hollyfield, who finished up his first 50 feet. And now he's working his way back along with the rest of the field. Then it is 18 dumbbell snatches at 100 pounds. They have to be squat snatches. There's now just about every athlete here in this first heat. If you take a look at Mitch Spute, closest to your screen. Now on the left, 
going through his initial set of 18. And we've already seen a couple athletes get some no reps for depth on the dumbbell squat snatch. I think that's going to be the toughest thing here. If you're so focused on getting that dumbbell locked overhead, it's kind of an unnatural position in terms of what we typically train. It's going to be really, really hard to kind of find that gray area where you go just low enough to break parallel, but you're not bearing it to kind of slow down your overall turnover rate. Austin Spencer in the middle seems to be having little trouble with that dumbbell. Next to him on the left of your screen is Colton Mertens, and on the right is your overall leader after two events, Brendan Willis. I like what Austin did. His very first rep out of the gate was a no rep. Didn't panic, took a second, took a step back, and since then he's just been ripping through these uh, dumbbell squat snatches. A nice way for an experienced athlete on the competition floor to make an adjustment on the fly uh, and make sure that he cleans up his movement right away. Mitch Spute closest to the camera. Next to him is Kyle Bernier. And Mitch Spute has stood on top of the podium at the CrossFit Games as a member of the Wasatch Brutes in 2017. And not just any spot on the podium, Sean. He was at the top. He is, he is one of the only athletes here that can say that he has beaten Rich Froning in CrossFit Games competition. And now Mitch Spute is done. And he is back on his handstand walk. So Mitch Spute in the lead here early in the opening heat of the third of seven scored events here at the Mayhem Classic. Spute is already through just about 50 feet again. It has to be unbroken both ways. Now Colton Mertens is on his hands as he has moved into second place. Just about every athlete is done now with the first set of dumbbell squat snatches as Austin Spencer, who looked like he was in the lead early, just kicked back up on his hands. Mitch Spute is done with his second of four 100-foot handstand walks. Now 14 dumbbell squat snatches. The weight has gone up 110 pounds for Spute. Butte continuing to work at a good pace here as he is the only man working on that 110 pound dumbbell. On the far right of your screen, just out of view, is Colton Mertens, and he is also on his second set. So it's Spute and Mertens, first and second place here in the opening heat. You're seeing a slightly different pull than you would typically see in your regular snatch here, right? A lot of these athletes kind of not necessarily getting to hip extension as they pull through the, the top portion of that snatch. Really just trying to get enough onto it to get it overhead and really dive under quickly to kind of minimize the range of motion that they have to go through on this on this movement. Yeah, two men with games experience on teams. Spewed on the left, Colton Mertens on the right, your top two athletes here in this opening heat of event number three. Butte finished 114th as an individual in the World Wide Open. And one of the men in this heat who was looking to earn an invite now, his first failed rep. That's his second failed rep, actually. He had got a no rep just before that. And it looks like he's having a hard time locking it out with his left hand specifically. Colton Mertens, his judge's hand is in the air, meaning he is reaching the end of the second set. Now Spute back to work, and he's got himself sorted. So Merton's looking to overtake the lead here in this heat. More hands going in the air from the judges as their respective athletes get set to finish up this set of 14 dumbbell squat snatches at 110 pounds. And now Spute is done on the left, so he has maintained his lead, but Merton's is right behind him. Spute on his hands just ahead of Merton, so Spute does maintain his lead, but Merton's has cut into it significantly here, and this is the third of four handstand walks for these two individuals. You can just see how confident Spute is on his hands. Merton's took a second to kind of catch his breath, make sure that he uh, wasn't fatigued in his handstand walk. Spute didn't waste any time, just kicked right up, got through that first 50 feet. 
Austin Bolin is on his hands as both Spute and Mertens are done with their first length of that handstand walk. They'll walk 50 feet back. And then 10 final dumbbell squat snatches at 120 pounds. The Spute is about 10 feet ahead of Mertens. Spute is kicked down, and now he'll make his way to the dumbbell. Mertens, on the upper right of your screen, is now across. And he'll try and catch Mitch Spute, but you think you got to think Spute's going to have the advantage here because of the weight of that dumbbell. Yeah, and then you you, you want to make sure. I think it's really key to watch how his left side goes with this dumbbell squat snatch. The last round, he failed two reps on that left side. So Mertens has his first rep down. Spute on the left of your screen, trying to hold him off. Now a no rep. It was on that same left side again. It looks like he's, he's really struggling to lock that dumbbell out overhead on his left side. Time is being kept on the floor. We have less than five minutes to go before we hit the cap. Spew continues to grind through those repetitions. Colton Mertens on the far right side of your screen is trying to chase him down here. Like we heard Rose say earlier, for a lot of these athletes, this is unfamiliar territory now. Maybe they got to play with the dumbbell a little bit, but they certainly haven't, most, most likely haven't done 120 pound dumbbell squat snatches under fatigue in the competition setting before. Just 10 reps on this dumbbell in this final set and Colton Mertens, his judge's hand is in the air. So Mertens is creeping closer to finishing this event. Spute's judge's hand is in the air as well. Two remaining for Mertens. Three remaining for Spute. So Mertens is now in the lead. Mertens on the right, Spute is on the left. Final rep for Colton Mertens. Two remaining for Spute. Mertens with the final rep, it's good. And he is done with his dumbbells. And now one final handstand walk to close out the event. Mitch Spute, meanwhile, is on his last rep. He just hit that. But Colton Mertens has about a 50-foot lead on Mitch Spute right now. Fifty feet between Colton Mertens and a heat win here is Mitch Spute is quickly catching up to him. Mertens is taking a break. And these 50-foot sections have to be unbroken, so this is an opportunity for Mitch to maybe take a chance and kick right back up, right back up. Mertens is back on his hands as he was keeping a close eye on Spute. Mitch Spute has yet to get back on his hands. He's gonna settle for second place in this heat. And Mertens is across. And he'll have to get across the finish line. And his time is, uh, is up. And we'll have to wait to hear from the judges to find out the official time. But Colton Mertens is your winner of the first heat. Now Mitch Spute will try to lock up second place. Spute is in, and he will take second in the heat. And now the battle for third as six men are still on the floor. And it's Austin Spencer in the back run there who is back on his hands for this first 50 foot length of this handstand walk. Spencer had a lead early. But that obviously did not hold. Kyle Bernier is also on his handstand walk. He's on the left of your screen. As Austin Spencer's taking a break underneath the rig at the far side of the floor here at CrossFit Mayhem. It's always a fine game you kind of have to play when you have unbroken handstand walk sections. Austin great Spencer's back up now. Great example is Brent Bukowski at the games when he came just a couple of feet shy, shy of what would have been a top finish. Maybe if he'd rested one, two more seconds. He would have got a top finish, but you come down before and it costs you well, 10, Spencer's 15 in. spots. 
Bernier's in as well. We have about a minute to go unofficially before we hit the time cap. That one minute official announcement before we hit the time cap. And that's Hunter Holyfield in the middle of the floor. And Austin Bolin as Hunter Holyfield comes across. Austin Bolin now is in. He's the only man in this heat who already has a qualifying spot locked up to the CrossFit Games thanks to his 17th place finish in the World Wide Open. So final seconds before we hit the time cap. 15 seconds remaining. I misspoke. Austin Bolins does not have a qualifying spot. It's Cam Crockett who is on the floor right now. You're looking at him as he tries to get across, and they're going to give it to him, and he is in. So Cam Crockett, pardon me, is the man who has already locked up a spot in the CrossFit Games with a 17th place finish. Austin Bolin finished 130, still looking for an invite. Colton Mertens, though, wins this heat. Have to wait for his official time. But he outduels Mitch Spute, took the lead late, and was able to hang on. Yeah, and I think what it really came down to, both were moving really well in their hands. Both were handling the uh, the dumbbell fairly well, but a couple of missed reps here or there, a couple of no reps is what really was the difference. So one heat down, three heats remaining. Let's take a look at the VIP lounge here that's been set up for some of the spectators that made the trip to Cookville, Tennessee to check out the first ever Cross of Mayhem Classic. Free food, free drinks. Can't beat it, man. It's a nope. great setting here. Mm -hmm. They have done a fantastic job of setting up this event. We've talked a lot about the intimate setting here, but it does feel a lot like one of your uh, local throwdown taken to the next level. And we talked to Rich Schroening about why he wanted to do this. He mentioned the success of uh, the mustard seed event that they do here. And just so far, things have, things have run smoothly. It's just one of those ways of, be, you know, I, I think from Rich's standpoint of giving back a little bit to the community that's given him so much. Send it down to Roy McKernan for more on heat number two. Thank you, Sean. I'm actually going to bring you a little bit of biased reporting. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the young man in the lane behind me, Tolo Moraquino, was on Invictus Boston last year. I became very fond of him because I followed him around the world. I saw him compete in Reykjavik in France. He has the highest listed snatch in CrossFit competition that I know of, 335 pounds. But you'll find right now, if you go to the leaderboard, he has a big fat goose egg from event number one and two. He was still in high spirits. He said, well, maybe they just forgot to put it on there. However, I'm taking a flyer on this one. Sean, Tommy, call me out. But I am calling him as the event winner. So Tola Moraquino looking to make up for that last place finish in the opening two events. Lane assignments, that was the last heat. This is heat number two that we'll be seeing, but these are the men that you're looking at now who were in the last heat. But a couple of men here in this heat who have games experience and who could do very well. Yeah, Will Morad, I think, in lane number four is going to be an athlete to watch. You know, he's got all the requisite skills. Um, he's strong overhead. Um, have no pro he'll have no problem with the dumbbell. Really good on his hands. Um, obviously, coming off a top ten finish at the games, someone to watch. And we are underway. Colton Mertens won heat number one. We are still waiting on his official time, but we start again with that 100-foot handstand walk, 50 feet down, 50 feet back. It has to be unbroken both times. After this, it's on to the first set of dumbbell squat snatches, 18 at 100 pounds. And I love how Tola, right out of the gate, is really attacking this handstand walk. He finished dead last in both of the runs yesterday, so I think he's really trying to make something up and prove that that was just kind of a fluke, if you will, or maybe just something that kind of hit his, hit outside his wheelhouse. And Moraquino with a really good pacer on their first two reps. Next to him is Will Morad. And Dylan Martin is on the right. But Moraquino really needs to do well in this event. Only seven events in this competition. 
And right now he sits in dead last. The fact that he's having no problem getting below parallel, knowing that how, how strong he is, he has he holds the record for the heaviest snatch ever in CrossFit competition history. He also is tied for the heaviest clean and jerk in CrossFit competition history. Um, you just want to make sure that the, the technical side of it, you know, the, the, the mobility to get underneath uh, to handle the movement is all right. Obviously, he's handling this dumbbell quite well. Um, that should set him up for a top finish. Now, the good news for Moraquino is, is that he is in line to receive the invite from the Dubai CrossFit Championship. And speaking with him after Dubai, he really wants to kind of get his individual experience up a little bit. Dubai was his very first competition as an individual. This is going to be his second. So he's really trying to chew up time on the floor just to get used to throwing down with some of the biggest names in the sport on the individual side. The opening set of dumbbell squat snatches, 18 total. And Moraquino is on his hands, walking his way back down. And Brandon Swan out of Australia on the right of your screen now. He's in second place. Good to see Swanee back at it. You know, he's got multiple individual appearances at the CrossFit Games. With those came comments in some of the earlier years, 2011, 2014. Haven't seen him been able to be able to make it back um, in this kind of newer era, but he was at the Games last year on a team with the Extermin uh, the Project X out of Australia. I know a lot of those uh, athletes are trying to go individual. Harriet Roberts already qualified, so it's hopefully Swan can kind of pick up where Harriet left off and maybe earn another invite here. Morquinho's in. Brandon Swan is done with his second handstand walk, and Josh Miller as well. And now the weight goes up to 110 pounds on the dumbbell squat snatch. 14 total reps. Morquinho trying to ha hang on to the lead and hold off Brandon Swan and Josh Miller. I mean, I mean look at the way he's manhandling that dumbbell. No. No question whatsoever when he goes to pick it up. It really comes down to the little technical things, making sure your balance technique is on point so you don't get a, a no rep where you can easily handle the dumbbell otherwise. Nick Matthew in lane three, he's also on the 110 pound dumbbell. And in lane number two, Saxon Panchik, one of the two Saxon, or two Panchik brothers who are competing here. Spencer being the other is Tolomor Aquino. Trying to hang on to the lead here. Colton Mertens won the first heat. We're still waiting on his official time. Tola Morikino trying to chase that down. But this just being the second heat, I mean, we have some heavy hitters in this. You have two athletes that finished inside the top 10 at the games, you know, in heat number two. Kind of speaks to the depth of the field here at the, the Mayhem Classic. Now, unofficially, we've hit the four minute mark here of this heat. So every competitor in this heat is on that 110 pound dumbbell. Saw Saxon Panchik working through his set. Moraquino, his judge's hand is in the air. Josh Miller's hand is in the air. Miller is second from the right in that black shirt and the white knee sleeves. On the far right is Brandon Swan. Moraquino's on the far left. And then next to him is Dylan Martin. So Josh Miller and Brandon Swan are both done. They have passed Moraquino, and Moraquino just put the finishing touches on his set. But it's Miller in the lead now. Brandon Swan in second, and Moraquino has fallen back into third place in this heat. Yeah, Tola had to take a few breaks there in that set of 14. You wonder if maybe he came out just a little bit too hot, got close to redlining, and is having to pull back a little bit. Miller and Swan done it just about the same time. Miller got there about a half a second before Brandon Swan did. So Brandon Swan and Josh Miller fighting for the lead in the second of four heats. Miller back on his hands. Brandon Swan getting set to put the finishing touches on his third of four handstand walks. We'll have a final set of dumbbell snatches, 10 reps at 120, and then a final handstand walk before these athletes close out their event. Everyone trying to chase down Colton Merton to one heat number one, and we are at five minutes and about 40 seconds. 9.17 was Colton Merton's time. This would be a great finish for Josh Miller, who sits in third place after day one. Day one. Strong performance in both the runs yesterday. Having another strong performance here at a, some, ahead of some of the athletes like Morad. We're trying to chase him down on the leaderboard. 
Josh Miller struggled with that opening rep. And Brandon Swan moving pretty well on the right side. Tolomor Aquino is back on the double as well as he has gone from first to third right now in this heat. Third and final set of dumbbell squat snatches, 10 reps at 120 pounds. Top three on the screen. In the middle is Josh Miller. He was your leader after that last handstand walk. Second place on the right is Brandon Swan. And on the left, Tola Moraquino. And they are rep for rep. Hands went up at the same time. They're both on the same arm for the dumbbell squat snatch. Brandon Swan has three reps remaining. Now Josh Miller with three reps. So Brandon Swan has taken the lead from Josh Miller here on this final set of dumbbell squat snatches. Nine minutes, 17 seconds by Colton Mertens is the time to beat. And we are unofficially at the seven minute mark. Two reps to go for Miller. Final rep for Brandon Swan. Swan done with the dumbbell and one final handstand walk. So Brandon Swan is in the lead. And Swan is off. Now Josh Miller has finished and Tola Moraquino. Moraquino just ahead of Miller. So this is the fight for second. But in lane number two is Saxon Panchik. Look at Tola's, uh, I guess we would call it stride length on his hands. He's really chewing up big chunks on, between each step with his hands. He's got to be careful there. Sometimes you get overextended there a little bit, and that's when you make a mistake. And with these unbroken sets, it could cost you. Here comes Brandon Swan just ahead of Josh Miller, who's in second place. Swan is in. So Brandon Swan will set the new time to beat unofficially about 8.01. Miller and Moraquino across at about the same time. We'll have to see how that sorts out. And Saxon Pazjic got in as well. Not sure what he will slot in there, but I do know that Brandon Swan was first across the finish line. But it was a scramble for second place in that heat. Brandon Swan, a great effort. Eight minutes, point two eight seconds for Brandon Swan. And that is your new top time with two heats remaining. Just given how some of these athletes are handling this dumbbell, I think that's going to hold up as a pretty strong time for Brandon Swan. Remember last night, Rich Froning did this workout in 6 minutes, 26 seconds. <laughs> I don't know if that's a fair comparison. <laughs> Rich said he, Rich did say he's improved each time he's done it, and that was the third time, so. so Nick Matthew in lane three, working his way back down the floor. As we have four men still on the floor. Matthew is in. In that battle for second, Josh Miller beat Tola Moraquino by 0.3 seconds. It was that close. With margin. Really interesting to see Morad struggle here. He, uh, he looked pretty good early on was towards, the, towards the front of the pack, but as we got to the middle dumbbell section, really started to slow. For an athlete that finished top 10 at the games, you're really surprised to see him this far back in the pack, one of the bottom three in the heat. And more as a guy who's still looking to qualify for the CrossFit Games as well. Matt Hewitt is in. And now Will Morad is across the finish line. That leaves Dylan Martin as the only man left on the floor. He has three reps remaining on a set of 10. Got about 90 seconds left. He's gonna have to hustle to make it underneath the cap. Two reps remaining and then that final handstand walk. So Dylan Martin looks like he is gonna run into the time cap here. Two reps remaining after that failed rep. And Dylan Martin was a, a fixture at the regionals. He had three regionals appearances in his career. His best finish was 12th at the Central Regional. That was in 2017. 
He's been active this season. He was out at Dubai just before the Christmas break. Now one rep remaining for Martin. And he has less than a minute to go before we hit the 12 minute time cap. So he's gonna have to hurry to complete this handstand walk. I mean, every 10 feet here is crucial. You know, there's five reps that are up for grabs in each one of these 50 foot sections. Every 10 foot, 10 feet is a rep. So even though he may not hit the time cap, he can maybe sneak ahead of a few athletes just by chewing up some distance on the handstand walk. Less than 30 seconds to go for Dylan Martin. Everyone here at Cross and Mayhem behind him trying to will him across the finish line inside that time cap. He's got 50 feet to go in about 15 seconds. Great effort by Martin. If he can hang on here, he's got a chance of getting across the finish line inside the time cap. Martin is in, and he will make it with a couple seconds to spare. Great effort from Dylan Martin. But it's Brandon Swan who now has the time to beat eight minutes point seconds. A very slow and steady effort for him as he is, takes the lead late in that competition and is able to hold off Josh Miller. Yeah, and right out the gate we saw it was a little bit of a hand race between Tola, um, but then Josh and, and Brandon Swan kind of moved to the forefront. Josh started to struggle with that last dumbbell, but Brandon stayed a little bit more consistent um, didn't back away from the dumbbell, and then by the time he got to the hands, uh, it was all said and done for him. He just blew away that last handstand walk. Let's go down to Rory McKernan with Brandon Swan. Brandon, how tough was it to not try and chase down Tola? Yeah, it was extremely tough, but I have to remember that uh, that's always the way it goes at the start. First event of the weekend, uh, outside of the run, you've got to uh, uh, hold the horses back just a little bit. And I was glad I did because I felt, uh, felt like I was in good shape on the 120 and was able to capitalize and, and get the heat win. Now, you live a half a world away. There's opportunities to compete in Australia. Why come here to the Mayhem Classic? I'm here to test myself. I, uh, I won a big competition over in Australia, and my plan is to try and win one of the Australian sanctionals. And, I mean, who knows? I'll do my best this weekend, but I'm just here to throw it down with the best that uh, are in the world. And um, it's been an awesome few days in Cookville. Looking forward to uh, today and tomorrow. A great start to day number two. Congratulations. Thank you. Brandon Swan all smiles after that result. He is your event leader with two heats to go. Eight minutes, point two eight seconds. For the former individual games athlete trying to get back there. This year at a CrossFit Torian in Queensland, Australia. Event three, powered by Defiance Fuel. Here's a look at it. Handstand walking and heavy dumbbell squat snatches. Heat three, lane number four, the 2015 CrossFit Games champion, Ben Smith. Anytime you have a, a former CrossFit Games champion in the field, all eyes are going to be on him. Obviously, Ben Smith got in via a special invite last year. He's already got a spot to the Games booked. This is the first time we're seeing him you know, on a sanctionals level. So it'll be interesting to see where he is in his training and his development for this season at this point. Ben Smith will be making his 12th straight <laughs> appearance at the CrossFit Games, and he's not even 30 yet. He started CrossFit when he was 17. That just doesn't compute, right? You know, you're not even 30, and you've got a dozen CrossFit Games appearances underneath your belt. Mark Juan Jones also in this heat. Spencer Panchik next to him as we are set for the start of Heat 3. We are underway, heat three. The time to beat belongs to Brandon Swan. Did that in heat number two, eight minutes, point two eight seconds. First 50 feet down on this first of four handstand walks. In that last heat, we saw that trio of top guys, Tola, Josh and Brandon finished this first round at about two minutes or so. So that's kind of the benchmark we're looking for some of these athletes to keep pace in this next heat. And Spencer Panchik is across the finish line. Dylan Pettit also got in on that 100 foot handstand walk to kick things off here. So Spencer Panchik was the first man to the dumbbell. He's in the middle of your screen next to him. Marquand Jones. And in lane number one is Luke Schaefer. 
another man with some games experience. Uh, he was on the OC3 Black Squad last year at the CrossFit Games. Eighteen reps here with the 100-pound dumbbell. Spencer Pantix judge's hand was in the air. He was the first man done with the handstand walk. Spencer looking to become the third Pancheck brother to qualify for the CrossFit Games. Part of the Pancheck brother trio, similar to Ben Smith and his two brothers, Alec and Dane. Drew Wayman closest to the camera. Second place overall coming into this event. Marquand Jones looking to earn an invite to the CrossFit Games here. And Jones will be uh, paying close attention to the TV on Monday night mm -hmm. as his Clemson Tigers vie for a national football championship. Yeah, hoping they're hoping for their third in four years. And Marquand Jones is the first man done with those 18 reps. And, and Jones had a pretty good career at, at Clemson, played 47 games there from 2008 to 2011 had 36 catches from 403 yards, one touchdown, and had a brief stint with the Montreal Alouettes in the Canadian Football League after that. Now Ben Smith is on his handstand walk. Spencer Panchik joins Marquand Jones at the other end of the floor. Now Jones working his way back on his second of four handstand walks. Spencer Panchik kicking up behind him. Luke Schaefer on the left side of your screen on his first 50-foot length here. Yeah, Marquand and Spencer both really need a strong performance here. They're both in the bottom five uh, overall after that trail run yesterday. Both Meanwhile, sorry, Tommy, Drew Wayman at the far end of the floor has yet to finish up. And We were, we were kind of talking off air before this that this could be a huge event for him, it, probably for the wrong reasons. Wayman, one of the taller, longer athletes, a lot of range of motion. Not really sure how he would handle the, the single arm dumb, dumbbell snatch. Given that he did so well yesterday, it was really important for him to get day number two off to a strong start. Right now it's looking like he's last in his heat. Really got to fight these poor finishes that kind of plagued him last year. And ultimately is, that was what kept him out of the CrossFit Games at Wadapalooza uh, and strength and depth as well. Wayman now making his return trip on his second handstand walk. Marquand Jones was the first man done with that second handstand walk, and he is on his set of 14 dumbbell squat snatches at 110 pounds. The time to beat again, Brandon Swan, 8 minutes, .28 seconds, and we just passed unofficially the four-minute mark of this heat. Marquand might have a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. He was hanging around that blue line in the open most of the, most of the competition. Then he got hit with a couple of the penalties, some of the false starts, some of the more kind of fine tooth comb penalties that we saw in the Open this year. Knocked him out of, out of contention for an Open spot. And I think he's really trying to get some of that back here in competition at the, at the sanctional level. Obviously, as an established games veteran, um, performing well at the East Regional back in 2018. Now Jones is 40th in the World Wide Open. Only 12 spots out of a qualifying spot. Mark Juan Jones, Spencer Panchik, and Ben Smith are all pretty close to each other here on this second set of 14 reps. Well, in a similar vein, Spencer Panchik was only four spots ahead of Marquand in 36. He's only a couple spots out, given the backfill process that we've seen. Cole, Cole Grayshaber, same thing. He was 37th. Marquand Jones is done, and he maintains his lead. Handstand walk number three of four for him. Spencer Panchik, he's on his hands. Ben Smith. And Cole Grayshaver, the youngster. Grayshaver, just 20 years old. He's on the right side of your screen. One of the potential future stars. Been to the games as a teenager as well. 
Oddly enough, all four of these athletes right here finished within 11 spots of each other on the World Wide Open. And Gray Shaver wasted no time, kicked right back up, and now he has moved into third place in this heat. Marquand Jones, he is now across. Spencer Panchik, you just saw him, he's in third now as Gray Shaver is moved into second place, making up a ton of ground on that third handstand walk. And now the final 10 reps on the dumbbell squat snatch, 120 pounds, time to beat. Eight minutes, 0.28 seconds. Unofficially, we're about six minutes, 25 seconds into this heat. Marquand Jones on the bottom left of your screen is trying to hold off Cole Grayshaber, who is on the bottom right of your screen. Gray Shaver taking over second place from Spencer Panchik on that third handstand walk. Ben Smith hanging in fourth. He's in the middle. Keep your eye on Ben here. I kind of like the pace that he's holding. He's just moving a little bit faster on this dumbbell. Looks a little bit more comfortable catching it overhead and standing up. Gray Shaver on his left side particularly, you see him kind of rock to his toes a little bit. Clearly there's a little bit of an issue with mobility. Even though the hand's up, I have to make sure that he doesn't get one of those costly no reps here towards the finish line. Hands in the air for the judges of Marquan Jones and Spencer Panchik and Cole Gray Shaver's judge. Gray Shaver's at the far end of the floor. Now on the bottom right of your screen. 37th in the World Wide Open. Out of cross hit, Lee's Summit, Lee's Summit, Missouri. Now two reps for him. And Gray Shaver may actually be in the lead here. Yeah, One Mark rep for Gray Shaver. Marquand's got two left, so he's, yeah, he's in the overall lead right now, but almost to the eight minute mark, so I think Brandon Swan's time from the previous heat might hold up. It does look like Brandon Swan's time will hold, but Cole Gray Shaver Way out in front now. Final handstand walk for the 20-year-old. Now Spencer Panchik and Ben Smith are both done. Panchik to his hands first. Smith right behind him. And Marquand Jones, who led early, has fallen back into fourth place in this heat. Come on, Gray Shaver on his way back looking to win this heat. But Brandon Swan's top time is still going to stand going into the fourth and final heat. But how impressive is this kid right now? I love it. And, and that's one of the things I, you really have to enjoy about CrossFit competition is the youngsters coming up and making a name for themselves. Gray Shaver is in unofficially about 8.37. And now Spencer Panchik is across. He'll take second in the heat, about 8 minutes, 50 seconds unofficially. And Ben Smith and Marquan Jones battling for third. Jones just ahead of Smith. Jones will take third in the heat, and it's Ben Smith in fourth. And now in lane number one, that is Luke Schaefer, the man who competed at the games last year on that OC3 black team. He also used to train at a CrossFit Kilo, kind of one of the, the strong com competitors' gyms out of the Midwest. We saw athletes like Street Horner come out of it in the past. They've also put teams at the games. No stranger to competition. Connor Duddy, Dylan Pettit, and Drew Wayman all still out there on the floor. So Wayman, who came in uh, in second place overall, probably going to lose ground on the overall leaderboard as Luke Schaefer works his way back to close out his event, approaching the 10-minute mark. So about two minutes to go before we hit the time cap. Schaefer is done, and he is in. Only three men left on the floor. Connor Duddy, Dylan Pettit, and Drew Wayman, and Wayman is still on the dumbbell, his final dumbbell. And Connor Duddy's one of those athletes that is, he can expect a CrossFit Games invite in his inbox pretty soon with some of the backfill process that we're seeing with athletes like Rich, Roy Gamboa, uh, Brandon Luckett, that'll be declining to go team. Right now, Duddy is in line to get that second invite. Sean Sweeney will get one. Uh, Willie George is national champ, so it'll pass down to him. So even if he, even with some less than ideal performances, he should be able 
to book his game's ticket already. Connor Duddy is in. Now Drew Wayman, meanwhile, has taken off on his final handstand walk. We have about a little more than a minute to go before we hit the 12-minute time cap. And Dylan Pettit is across. So Drew Wayman now the only man left on the competition floor trying to get inside that 12-minute time cap. Less than a minute to go. And this is just damage control here for Drew Wayman. We saw a couple athletes get capped in the previous heats. Another athlete, Dylan Martin, just make it just before the time cap. He's just trying to make sure he could snag as many points as he can, knowing that this isn't going to be a strong finish for him. And Wayman is in, so all eight athletes in this third of four heats will get in inside the 12-minute time cap. But that man, Cole Grayshaber, really took control of this thing on that third handstand walk and then was able to keep that pace on that final heavy dumbbell. Yeah, and he outdueled some some games veterans and some big names in the sport alongside to just to, to accomplish that. You know, we looked at the athletes that he was outdueling there to start. The, start we saw Mark Juan Jones, Ben Smith, Spencer Panchik, athletes that are very well versed in live competition here. But Cole outdueled them all. He got stronger as the workout wore on. Really impressive. We talked about you know lever lengths and range of motion here, but Cole's one of the biggest athletes in the field, six feet. 200 pounds, and he made quick work of it. No problem with the handstand walk. Gets an event win, or at least a heat win. Cole Gray Shaver wins the heat, but is to beat eight minutes, point two eight seconds as we head into the fourth and final heat. One more look at what we are facing here. Just two movements is the handstand walk and those heavy dumbbells. And that dumbbell, especially late in the event, has really proven to be the problem here. Yeah, in every heat we've seen an athlete kind of lump, leap, jump out to the front here in the early round, but the middle dumbbell, the last dumbbell, are really what kind of separates athletes who can finish stronger, um, ultimately get the top finish in the heat. Roy McKernan is on the competition floor watching the action. Let's send it down to him with more on event number three. Sean, Tommy, Jeffrey Adler is one athlete who comes in with a little bit of hype to this tournament. He'll actually be the top seed. Remember, the seeding today goes based off of open performance. I talked to Adler earlier and I said, listen, the interesting reality now is that you're already qualified for the CrossFit Games, but we saw you in Dubai, and here now we see you at the Mayhem Classic. What are your goals? And he actually said his goal for to be here was just to be part of it, this first event here in, CrossFit, in Cookville at the CrossFit Mayhem Classic. He said his ankles are a little beat up, otherwise his body's feeling good. So look for Jeffrey Adler to make a move here again in event number three. Thank you, Roe. Chandler Smith, also in this heat. One of the men who has already earned a spot at the CrossFit Games, courtesy of his 22nd place finish in the World Wide Open. And next to him is Samuel Cornier, and then Jeffrey Adler will be in lane four. And Adler's a man that I know early on today, you said you'd be keeping an eye on. Yeah, you look at 20.3 and 20.4 workouts that encompass some similar skills that we see here in this uh, in this particular workout. Well, Adler was sixth in the world in that in 20.3. He was the overall worldwide winner in 20.4. Um, he already has his games ticket booked, so this is a good opportunity to really kind of expand upon his live competition experience and maybe put down a top performance and showcase some skills here. 30 seconds till we start. All these men trying to chase down Brandon Swan's top time of eight minutes, point two eight seconds. Remember, Rich Froning did this event last night, six twenty six his time. So, again, <laughs> programmers at advantage, but still impressive. Three, two, one, go! Final heat underway. Uh, the opening event of day number two. It's the third of seven scored events here at the CrossFit Mayhem Classic. And a quick pace here to open up as Samuel Cornier makes the turn just ahead of Scott Tetlow. Cornier in the lead here, about five feet ahead of Tetlow on this first of four 100-foot handstand walks. Cornier's in, and he'll get to work on his first set of 18 dumbbell squat snatches, 100 pounds on the dumbbell. Now all six athletes in this final heat onto the dumbbell. So look at Alexander Carone. 
that black headband. Nice to see Caron back out on the competition floor. He was in Dubai as well. He's an athlete who was at the games in 2018, but he ultimately had to withdraw due to injury, unfortunately. Had a knee injury, and so he's just starting to get his competition legs back underneath him. Now, Caron has already qualified for the CrossFit Games, finished 23rd overall uh, in the World Wide Open. He's on the far right of your screen. Samuel Cornier is second from left. He was the leader after that first handstand walk. So Alexander Caron continuing to go through his 18 repetitions at 100 pounds on that dumbbell squat snatch. Time to beat eight minutes, .28 seconds. That was done in heat number two by Brandon Swan. And Caron was the guy that we were looking at just a few short years ago, maybe being a top 10 kind of guy at the games, one of those breakthrough rookies. You know, a knee injury is something that's really hard to bounce back from. So it's taken him almost two years now to get back to this point. Judge's hand starting to go in the air now. As the majority of the athletes are set to close out this first set of 18 dumbbell squat snatches, and then it's another handstand walk. Scott Tetlow is done first. But it's Samuel Cornier who is just ahead of him on the handstand walk. Tetlow put the dumbbell down first, but Cornier got to work before him on that handstand walk. Cornier's done with his first 50 feet, and here comes Tetlow. Tetlow's kind of one of the surprise stories of the Open. He finished 17th worldwide. He's got himself an invite to the CrossFit Games um, for his very first time. He's one of those names that kind of popped up, and you're like, who the heck is this guy? And you're wondering if he's going to fade. Ultimately held on for a top 20 spot worldwide in the Open behind some strong performances. And now we've got to kind of get to see how he performs in live competition. Cornier's done with his second handstand walk, and now he steps up to the 110-pound dumbbell, 14 repetitions. Scott Tetlow continues to sit in second place in this heat. Now Alexander Carone is in third. Chandler Smith is across, and Jeffrey Adler is now in as well. Tetlow and Cornier, the two men fighting for first place here in this heat. Everyone trying to chase down Brandon Swan. He has the best time so far, 8 minutes, 0.28 seconds, and we are unofficially about 3 minutes, 24 seconds into this event. And you can see right there, Tetlow starting to struggle with that middle dumbbell. What we talked about earlier is, hey, it doesn't matter how well you do that first round. As that dumbbell gets a little bit heavier, you start to pour on some fatigue from the handstand walk, how you're able to stabilize and control that those later dumbbells really is the key, the key to this workout. Tyler Christoffel was the man next to Tetlow. He's doing well on that dumbbell, but these are your, your two leaders on the left of Samuel Cornier. He was in first place to start this movement. Tetlow's on the right, he's in second. One thing we haven't talked about and pay attention to is watch the dumbbell head and how it moves at the top once they lock it out. Have, hasn't come into play much, but wrist control and being able to control the kind of rotation and spin of that dumbbell, we've seen it cause a couple athletes in earlier heats to miss some reps later on. You've seen Cor Cornier get a lot of rotation on that. Kind of curious to see if it's going to affect him later on. Samuel Cornier had a deck of CrossFit where Michelle Latondra coaches. Part of that very strong, very deep athlete field from Deca Comp alongside Pat Vellner. Athletes like Laura Horvath in the past, Alex Smith. Cornier is now done, and he has put some good distance between himself and Scott Tetlow as Tetlow took a look over his shoulder to see where Cornier was as Tetlow now just got a no rep on his final rep of that set of 14. So Cornier all by himself in the lead. He's a former hockey player, but a car crash forced him out of the game when he suffered a concussion, and that's when he found CrossFit, and here he is. And on his way to the CrossFit Games this year after finishing 12th in the World Wide Open. And watch him on this way back. He is chewing up big pieces of real estate with each step on his hands. It's one thing to kind of like just let your momentum carry you. It's another thing to be actively pulling through a handstand walk. That just shows how comfortable you are in your hands and how much more control you're in when you're upside down. Final set on the dumbbell for Samuel Cornier. He steps up to that 120-pound dumbbell, the only man there right now. 
About five minutes and 45 seconds unofficially gone by in this workout. Brandon Swan, the top time at eight minutes, point two eight seconds. Alexander Caron, not far behind. He's on that last dumbbell too. He's kind of very quietly moved up the ranks of this heat. Samuel Cornier left Tetlow behind, but Alexander Caron has now moved into second place. Chandler Smith is also on the final dumbbell as well as Tetlow on the left of your screen getting set to work on his final 10 reps. And Chandler Smith on the left. Really impressive how Cornier manhandled those first five reps. He actually chose to do five very quickly, took an extended break here. 120 pounds on this final dumbbell. Samuel Cornier, who is on the right side of that left box, is your leader. And his judge's hand is in the air. Now two reps remain for Samuel Cornier. He's got a shot at chasing down Brandon Swan. We are not even at the seven minute mark, about 10 seconds to go unofficially before we hit that. And Cornier just got hit with a no rep for not reaching depth. Right back at it. Now one rep remaining for Cornier on this 120 pound dumbbell. Alexander Caron is creeping up. He has three reps remaining and two reps remaining for Chandler Smith. Cornier's done. And he's going to have time to try and track down Brandon Swan. Unofficially, we're at the 7 minute 20 second mark. Eight minutes flat is the time to beat from Brandon Swan. And he's almost picked up the speed in this round compared to last. We talked about how, how much real estate he was chewing up on his hands. So less than 30 seconds to go for Cornier. Brandon Swan seeing if his time is going to last. Chandler Smith has moved into second ahead of Alexander Caron. Smith on the left of your screen, but Cornier looks like he's going to do it by a couple seconds. He's got to get to the finish line, and I don't know if the celebration is going to cost him or not, but it's going to be close. Cornier may have done it unofficially by a couple of seconds. Seven fifty-eight from the floor is what we're being told for Sam or Cornier. So he's looking like he's going to win the event. Now Chandler Smith is in, and he's going to take second place in this heat. Alexander Caron is across. He'll finish third. Strong performances by both those athletes. Should be good enough for a top five finish. And Tyler Christoffel and Scott Tetlow, bottom right of your screen, they are still on that final dumbbell, and Tetlow who was fighting with Cornier for the lead early on, has fallen back in the pack here as he has struggled on this dumbbell. Here comes Jeffrey Adler. And, and even though they're kind of at the bottom of the heat, it's a little misleading. This heat has been much faster than the previous three heats. We're still only nine minutes in, which is well ahead of some of the other times that we saw in the 10 to 11 minute range. And if you watch the good dudes last night here, you saw Rich Roning put up the fastest time by a mile at six minutes, 26 seconds. You think that guy's still fit? But I think, I think and we kind of spoke about it yesterday, I think a better example of that was um, Haley Adams' time, around eight and a half minutes, which we've seen some of these top times be about for a top 10 athletes at the games like Haley Adams, that was a good kind of measuring stick for these athletes. Tetlo and Christoffel still working on their final set of 10. They have plenty of time here, about two and a half minutes to go before we hit the time cap. So Tetlow's on his final handstand walk, and he'll get right to work. Christopher also has a spot at the games booked up, so as unfortunate as a finish like this might be, you know, ultimately it's, it's all just practice here, getting ready for the big stage. Yeah, Tetlow, another man as well, we mentioned that earlier, who is in the CrossFit Games in his 17th in the World Wide Open at a CrossFit kilter in Round Lake, Illinois. Final five feet for Tetlow. And he will come across unofficially about 10 minutes, 20 seconds. And Tyler Christoffel, the only man left on the floor, and all he has to do is complete his handstand walk.
This is just the third of seven scored events here on what is going to be a very fun weekend at CrossFit Mayhem here in Cookville, Tennessee. They had a two-part event yesterday, that 5K ruck run, that counted as two scored events. They'll have three more events today, and then two tomorrow. We also have the good dudes throwing down throughout the day here. So plenty of good stuff to watch here at the CrossFit Mayhem Classic. Christopher is one of those athletes that's trying to make the transition from the team competition. He's been to the games multiple times on CrossFit 417's uh, games team in the past. Last year had a couple strong performances. He was actually one of the athletes in the Open, if you remember, actually appealed his penalty ruling right. and won his appeal. And now struggling with that handstand walk. He's got about five feet to go. Remember, it's got to be unbroken. If he comes down, he's got to go back 50 feet, and he's going to make it. So Christoffel is in with time to spare inside that 12 fleet in this fourth and final heat, just like we saw in the prior heat. Completes the event inside those 12 minutes. Samuel Cornier unofficially is going to win the event as he beats Brandon Swan's time by two seconds. Really strong performance from Cornier. Unlike some of the past, past heats, he was one of the front runners from the get-go and was actually able to hold on, really highlighted by how well he moved those heavier dumbbells in the 14 and, and 10 rounds. Um, and by the end, he was just chewing up so much ground on that handstand walk. Uh, you know, another strong performance from Cornet, who's going back to the games, and uh, something to really hang his hat on. Let's go down to the competition floor. Rory McKernan with your event three winner, Samuel Cornier. Samuel, I was uh, looking on Instagram. You said, let's see how I perform after all those changes I made post games. What were the changes you made for such a fantastic finish in the Open this year? Uh, the big change I made is um, I was doing a lot of weightlifting before, and now I'm doing, since the games, a lot of uh, conditioning, aerobic stuff. So I stopped completely weightlifting for like two months because I had an injury in my elbow. So it's really pay off. I feel really more comfortable when I'm training, when I do my workout. So I think that's a big change. I stopped to do more weightlifting than more cardio stuff. Okay, this event in particular, it was released before. How much did you actually practice it? Um, I didn't de do the workout, the old workout, I mean, is uh, when I s when Rich posted, I just do the half. So I was just practicing some dumbbell cycling. I try some touch and go. Uh, I do the Anson wall, just 25 feet, just to fill the workout. And I know it was going to burn after the 14 reps. And that's what happened. <laughs> I was like, oh, my chest are completely dead. Well, it paid off really well. I know Cookville probably feels like it couldn't be any further from home. Do you have a message for your people back home en français? Oui, euh, merci beaucoup, guys. Tout le monde, Dico CrossFit, j'adore. Grâce, grâce à vous, je peux faire ce sport-là. Fait que je viens vous dire un gros merci encore. Congratulations on an event win. Sam Cornier leaves the floor with an event win here in the third of seven sport events at the CrossFit Mayhem Classic after beating Brandon Swan by two seconds. A lot more action to come. We're just getting started here at the Mayhem Classic here in Cookville, Tennessee. We're going to step aside for a couple of seconds. We'll be back with event number three for the women. Stay with us here on the CrossFit Mayhem Classic from Cookville.